Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this video, I'm going to test the new Anglerfish series LED lights from iFootage. They claim they've got some of the best color accuracy of all LED lights on the market, as well as being competitively priced. So I'm gonna test them against the Broncolor, the Aperture, and HMIs to find out. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Okay, so before we get stuck into the full-on color temperature and color accuracy tests, et cetera, et cetera, let's just take an overview on what I've received here from iFootage. Now, they've told me they're naming the series Anglerfish Series. They've sent me this smaller 60-watt unit, uh, very compact. Uh, it's got a shotgun uh, operating option as well. Looks like it can take a battery uh, on there as well. The control panel on that one is built in so you haven't got a separate ballast unit for that particular model the next one up is a 200 watt unit and this moves over to the standard bowens fitting for soft boxes accessories etc and that has got a ballast unit that you can see down up there on the floor we're going to look at that in more detail in a moment and then finally the larger one they sent me was the 300 watt model and again running off of a ballast unit now they sent me a few accessories these very useful um, lantern style modifiers which are great actually for interior lighting they give a sort of good global illumination light firing out in all directions so if you're lighting interiors and things and they had some you know um, parabolic soft boxes which you know parabolic soft boxes are pretty much a waste of time they take up more space than necessary for a soft box uh, but if you take the front diffuser off you may benefit from the reflective uh, use of the uh, reflector the parabolic shape now on the smaller unit because it uses a different mount size they also have this adapter that allows you to fit the bigger accessories the bigger Bowens fit accessories onto the smaller unit if you want how usable this small 60 watt brightness is going to be for videography i don't know can't see it being much use for stills um, but um, we're going to test the power as well because what i want to know for example is we've got our really lovely aperture 600 d's here with the larger ballast unit uh, very professional led light in my opinion that 600 power should be double the power of this 300 unit but do they balance out at that so we're going to take some uh, measurements with a light meter um, afterwards when we do our tests now let's take a look at one of the ballast units what is interesting about these is they are very compact this is the ballast unit for the 300 watt model and it's got the uh, control power so you can adjust the exposure level of the output the brightness of the light here and you can do it in these small increments uh, using the control wheel or you can do it in intermittent from off to 20 percent 40 percent 60 percent 80 up to 100 here and it's a very compact ballast unit if you compare it to the ballast unit for the aperture let me just take one of these over there a second i'm just going to disconnect if you compare the size of this to this it's a huge difference now i know that the other light is only 300 watts but the ballast unit is the 300 ballast unit is the same as size as this but this is the ballast unit for a 600 watt lamp and yet this is much more than half the size this is at least a quarter of the size and nowhere near as heavy so that may be useful for those videographers or photographers who are on the move um, mobile and they need uh, that you know easier to carry stuff so um, within the ballast units themselves as well we have some other features we've got all the special effects features and the special effects features allow you to do lightning 
uh, faulty bulb, paparazzi, welding, strobe, explosion. They even have a feature where it will pick up the beat of music and it will time with the music. But I think that feature only comes via the app. There is an app controller that you can use on your phone or your mobile device to um, control the um, features and functions on the light. Um, then there's the main menu, fan settings, quiet, auto, etc., and a Bluetooth reset. Um, it, you know, it's got what you need for an LED light with those various controls and effects. The same thing on the aperture, it's got all of the um, special effects, plus it's got a DMX mode for plugging it into a full professional board uh, if necessary. But really, what I want to get down to with this is how good is the quality of the light that it puts out? Is it pure? Is it clean? Is it full spectrum? Um, what sort of CRI do we achieve compared to our other models? Now, here we have HMI light. Now, HMI lights are full spectrum, 100 CRI. So you basically can't get any purer than this. HMI lights uh, give out the same uh, effective light as daylight and as studio strobe, studio flashlighting. So this, if you like, will be our benchmark. So I'm going to shoot some still images with a color checker, car, uh, color checker chart. And I'm going to shoot it with the HMI on a $30,000 Hasselblad camera, everything to absolute perfect color parameters. We're going to test the HMI, we're going to test the aperture, we're going to test the Bron LED which also claims a really high CRI color index and then we're going to see how these compare because they're claiming that their color purity is really really good. Okay, so for my first series of tests I'm going to measure the output value of the light because a lot of these claims about what wattage and everything else. Really, all that matters is how much light are these units throwing out. So what I've done is I've marked two meters here away from the light. The light is set at my head height and the light meter will be measuring at my head height on that two meter distance. I'm going to put each light individually and take a measurement. You have to do this in a blackened out studio. So currently now my studio is in blackout mode. There is no ambient light, no other lights on, just the single light that we'll be measuring. So I have my settings on my light meter and for you videographers, I've just gone with a base ISO of 640 and a 30th of a second shutter speed. And now I'm going to take a measurement of that light at that position and that's f22.2 on an on a hmi 400 light so there's f22.2 on the hmi light let's do the next one okay this is the bron color f160 f8 so this is the aperture 600d at maximum power and just to clarify i'm just using the standard reflector that each light comes with. So on the aperture 600D, F22 and 9 tenths, so literally F32. Okay, so this is the Anglerfish 300 watt model. So theoretically, compared to the aperture 600D, which gave us a reading of F32 or F22 and 9 tenths, then at 300 watts compared to the 600 watts, this should give us F22. So let's find out and see how it is. And it's F16.8. So it's two tenths under F22. So it's not quite meeting the expectations on the power output of 300 watt compared to 600 watt. It's two tenths under. Well, you could say it's one tenth under because the aperture was one tenth below F32 coming in at uh, 20, F22 and nine tenths. And we've now got F16 and eight tenths, which is one stop and one tenth under, which is half the amount of light and one tenth. And you're going from a 600 watt to a 300 watt, which is half the amount of light. So it's pretty close. So we have the iFootage Anglerfish Series 200 watt light now. 
in the same position. F16 and 3 tenths, which is actually about bang on because jumping from 300 watts to 200 watts is not a one stop jump, it's about half a stop, so that's pretty accurate. Okay, so this is the iFootage little compact 60 watt F8 and 7 tenths. Okay, so the results are in on the luminosity output and I've put the lights in order of power of what they actually put out in terms of power, measured power at a two meter distance. Now, interestingly, the Broncolor F160 came out with the lowest power reading at F8. And that puzzled me because this is a 160 watt light. So it should have been coming out somewhere around about near this 200 watt light here. So I looked into it and I thought, what's going on? And I realized that the Broncolor uses a diffused reflector. Okay, it's the only one that's got a softer diffused reflector. All the other units have highly polished parabolic reflectors, which are going to put out more light. So I did another quick test where I changed the reflector over to the uh, different Braun one, the P70 reflector, which is a more highly polished light. That changed the output to F16, which would have put this light in the same power as this. This one, remember, came out at, um, F16 and 3 tenths. So that would have tied in really nicely because that's 200 watts and that's 160 watts. So that came out 3 tenths brighter. That's what I would have expected. But if we're judging it just on what they output with the reflectors that they're supplied with, the Bron is the weakest. But keep in mind, it's got a diffused reflector and not a highly polished reflector like these. So then we have the 60 watt eye footage. And this actually put out more light than I expected. Uh, probably about half a stop more than I thought it would be capable of. This one came in at F8 and 7 tenths exposure. The 200 watt came in at F16 and 3 tenths, which is where I would have expected it to be uh, based on the other power ratings. This 300 watt eye footage came in at F16 and 8 tenths. That's where I would expect it to be. The next most powerful was the HMI 400 at F22 and 2 tenths. And then the Aperture 600D came in at F22 and 9 tenths. So you might as well just call it F32. So that is the power results at two meters. Let's now move on to color accuracy. So I have my H6 100 there and for my absolute benchmark, I've decided to use Studio Strobe Studio Flash as my benchmark test shot. Just set up a little still life here for color reference. We've got a good pure white label. We've obviously got uh, an x right color checker card. We've got this young lady who looks a little bit like me with her hair cut. And then we have some fruit and uh, a can of drink there uh, also as a reference. So I'm going to shoot it with studio flash lighting, which I know to be absolutely perfect on the color. And then we'll move on to um, HMI and the other lights and we'll have a look at the results. Okay, so first test, studio flash. Okay, so that's the HMI. The aperture LED lighting. the 300 watt model. So we have the 200 watt lamp. Now we move to the small 60 watt anglerfish eye footage light. Finally for the Bron LED. Okay, so that's finished on all the tests. We're gonna look at the details close up on that shortly. But just as a reference, I'm gonna turn my studio house lights on, which are daylight balanced LED, but they're nowhere near full spectrum. The lighting won't be the same harsh directional, but it will give us an idea of what lower CRI LEDs uh, result in color wise. Okay, so with the house lights, which are daylight balanced LEDs, 
but not full spectrum. We'll use this just as a reference. So here are the results of the colour tests and I'll be giving you my thoughts on those at the end of the video. So for our final test, we thought we'd just run a series of video clips using 240 frames per second slow motion because that will tell us two things. First of all, how much effective light you have because obviously when you're filming in slow-mo, you're, you're losing a lot of light. So we'll see which lights can keep up with a base uh, exposure. We're going to run 250th of a second shutter speed to maintain for 240 frames a second. F16 as an aperture for the depth of field that we want to attain and the base ISO of 12,800 on the Sony a7S III. Now in addition, all good LED lights are flicker free and you should be able to film up to 2,000 frames per second with no flicker. You're well into phantom flex territory at 2,000 frames a second so no one's going to have that problem but this test will also reveal of course, if there is any problem with any flickering on any of these lights. So as you can see from the slow motion results, nothing to worry about there. As expected, LED lights are usually uh, fine up to 2000 frames a second. You could see obviously as the power of the wattage of the lights reduced, such as the um, 60 model, that the, uh, we had less light to work with. Now when we look at the results of the colour tests, this is where I was very impressed with the Anglerfish eye footage lights. Uh, they claimed that the lights had a super high CRI colour accuracy and they actually did. Uh, I use Studio Flash as my benchmark where I know the colour to be absolutely perfect and the Anglerfish lights and the Bron Colour LED which also have very high colour accuracy, they came in top. The Anglerfish results were superb, especially with the 300 watt model. We had good power and we had super colour fidelity uh, on those tests, comparable to Studio Flash. So I was very impressed with that. On the pricing, the 300 watt lamp is apparently going to retail at about $600. That compared to an aperture 300 watt lamp is $900. The 200 watt lamp is going to retail at about $420. And the uh, smaller unit, the 61, uh, is going to come in at around about $200 comparable to the aperture LS60D, which is $370. So they are very competitively priced in terms of compact travel related size ballasts, colour accuracy, value for money. I was extremely impressed with these Anglerfish eye footage lights. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.